All right, shalom, Rastafari. Greetings once again. This is your brother Wendem Yado, otherwise known as Ras Yadinos Tefari, Ras Iadonis Tefari, as some say. Um, the crucifixion, the political crucifixion of His Majesty. This is the topic matter that we want to touch on, and it's based on a, a respondent or one of the commenters to. Uh, the one of the previous videos we posted, the part two, um, to uh, Rastafari and True Light of Hanukkah, Initiation, Disciple, uh, Discipline, and Illumination into the Kingly Christ. Now, after Brother Justin, if this is the, the proper order, there was... Um, Smyrna Angel, Smyrna Angel, whether I think a brother, but it could be a brother or a sister, but I think a brother, said no disrespect, but what do you mean by the crucifixion, or maybe you said crucifixion of Hala Selassie, they shall make war with the lamb, but he shall overcome them, for he, king of kings, which guy can put them hand upon my God? My God, his in the spirit and in the flesh, power of the Holy Trinity, please let me now know, let me know what you mean by the crucifixion of Jah Rastafari. Now, our first or initial response to uh, Smyrna Angel concerning the, quote, uh, crucifixion of his majesty was that the political crucifixion does not mean that they, the, the guys and the gals, the, the ghouls, the guys, the goyim, and the, the gawuls, the goals, the gawuls, it does not mean that they succeeded. They didn't succeed, the goys, the guys. Goy means, means a goy. Goy in Hebrew means a Gentile. That's why Aina's uh, Rastafari is not a guy. You know, we're not a guy, because guy come from Goy, like Goyim. So our response was that the political crucifixion, and it was a political crucifixion. Let us not make no mistake about it. It was a political crucifixion does not mean that they, the Goyim, the enemy, succeeded, but intended evil against his majesty and think they think themselves, they, they be like Eve, that they succeeded. In Revelation, it says, Revelation 1 and 18, I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, look and see, behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. Now, that was our first response to um, your question and, and, and your um, request that we would um, explain what we mean by that. I think the gospel and the Bible, the glory of his majesty, actually explains very well um, for us, and we'll have to go to that particular foundation, the foundation of, of Scripture. In fact, if you recall the New Day, the particular New Day speech of His Majesty from um, May, uh, May 5th, 1941, when His Majesty returned five years to the very day, which proved that He truly is the Moa, the Moa Andesa, the Imanegeta Yehuda. And Moa in the Gutters means the overcomer, the conqueror, the one who overcomes. And the whole idea of being conqueror or overcomer is that it might seem to those who want to make believe, it might seem that they overcame, that they overcame the one who is the overcomer. In fact, the word overcame and overcome means that you were, it, it, it appears that you were defeated. It appears that you were done with. It appears that it was all over for you. And when we look at some of the historical data and the king's evidence, from that particular time, we get to see that this was, this was the perspective of the world in that time. You see, it's different for us to look at history from now 
and and to look retrogradely back over or look forward in the reverse direction of what, well, what happened, so forth and so on, and what eventually happened and what is going on right now. But when we just look at the history of that time, before anyone knew that His Majesty would return five years to the very day, they wrote him off. They wrote him off. And many of our own so-called, quote, people or sheeple, including the great Marcus Messiah Garvey, wrote off Haile Selassie I, our Godfather and King of Kings. Now, what, what is it that now we mean concerning the events of 1974, the events of 1975? Now, what we're going to do is, is introduce some additional documentation um, as some backup. Now, we're going to go to the Bible. The Bible really gives us the real context of the whole idea of crucifixion. You remember when Christ said that if they've done these things to the Father, you know, if they've done these things to me, they would do it to you. And he said that he is like the Father. And his prophecy, the prophecy of the Son, Yeshua, especially in John chapter, like from 14, 15 to what, 16 in particular, you understand the prophecy that we find there where he's speaking of, some would say he is speaking of himself, some Christians tell us. But when we read it in context, he's speaking of the Father. He speak, because he's saying of a new relationship. In other words, you don't pray in my name or ask me at this time, but you must ask the Father in and through me. This is one of the reasons why some of us see mystically when they ask his majesty concerning, are you Christ? And all of the historical evidence says that his majesty's response to that will just be to look at them, just be still. He, he would just, when they ask him this, he would just look at them. It was the priests and others who were saying, "No, His Majesty is a very, a very godly man," and so all that was all that's true, you understand. But His Majesty Himself did not um, respond to that, saying, "I am not Christ," or "Yes, I am Christ." Instead, it was very biblical and very prophetical in the sense of, "Be still and know." You understand? What do you know? What do you say? It's like what Christ asked the disciples. Who do people say that I am? And then he asked him, well, who do you say that I am? And it was only um, Peter who said that you are the Christ, the Son of God, that Christ noted as, as being extra, uh, extraordinary. He was able to receive the Spirit. He, he was in tune with that higher revelation that was there for all of them to see it. But the rest of them didn't see it, but it was Petros. It was Peter that saw that. Now, how interesting that the martyr, one of the martyrs, Abuna Petros, is also named Petros as well. Upon this rock, I will build my church. Now, the 1961 mission, mission report, you've probably heard of that in Rastafari. If you haven't, then try to look it up. There's probably data out there. In fact, we found a lot of the complete information on one of the Israeli Sites. The Israeli Rastafari sites actually had the other part of the mission report, because there's a part that's called the minority report. And this is 1961, when certain Rastafari hailing out of Jamaica had went to Ethiopia and to other African nations to see what's what and to do their own report of what's going on concerning repatriation, Ethiopia, the promised land. They went to see the promised land and to see the king of kings. And in that particular report, when they went to Ethiopia, they had met with Abuna Basilios. And in meeting with him, they discussed their ideas concerning his majesty, their, their vision, what they received spiritually, why they are Rastafari. And concerning that, Haile Selassie is the black Christ, or he is the returned Messiah. And it's interesting that the head of the church, one of the, one of the true heads of the church, or one of the true priests of the church, um, Abuna Basilios, he said the Bible can be interpreted that way. He did not, he did not say, oh, no, you are wrong. Not, not, don't do this. It's other priests that subsequently did that. This is other generation of so-called Ethiopian priests that we will call for the example of Christ's parable, the husbandmen. Now look up the husbandmen parable. If you know it, then you know exactly what we mean, that these are the ones who are like the caretakers 
of the church. But now when the ear came forward, some of them sought to prevent the ear from his inheritance. Now, that being said, that being said, this is some of the background to show that, first of all, the Bible is the root when we're talking about crucifixion. Most Christians out there, a lot of the nominal Christians today and the churchians who call themselves Christians today, um, they preach a, a kind of a, 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 that Christ was crucified or the baby Jesus now, now we're in the Christmas time, the baby Jesus, and, and he was cru theologically what they preach. They whitewash it, but then they also whitewash the doctrine. They kind of go to the crucifixion, but don't really focus so much on the, the resurrection or the return or Christ in his kingly character. That's the half of the story that the majority of Christians are lost in mis translation and in a wrong Eurocentric interpretation of the gospel. We just saw a program recently, and let's just note this for the record. We saw this program. It was on PBS Frontline. You might be able to even check it out on, on the Internet because sometimes they show the programs again. And if you go to the PBS website, the Frontline website, you might be able to find it. It's called uh, From Jesus to Christ. And it's talking about the so-called the Jesus movement from the time of Jesus Christ 2,000 years ago, and it's tracing the Western Christianity. It makes a little brief message, mention of Ethiopia, you know, but not too much of, of, of Ethiopia or blacks or, or the black root of Christianity. But if you were to study it for yourself, the historical evidence, what we call the king's evidence, you'll see that Christianity was an African, Afro-Shemitic or Afro-Asian Phenomena. It, it, it was taking place in North Africa and in East Africa and in parts of Arabia. This was the root. This was Egypt, Ethiopia, um, um, Jerusalem, or Old Jerusalem. That whole area was the root of Christianity. But in most worldly um, interpretation or misinterpretation of the Eurocentric, there's an over focus on Christianity as it went into Rome. You understand? A Romanism. In fact, they said something in the program. They said that after Constantinos, after Constantine, they said that, and now the kingdom of God, or the, the kingdom of God became the Roman Empire, the Roman Empire became the kingdom of God, so forth and so on. And they just continued to follow in whitewashed north. So, but there's a whole southern, there's a whole southern branch of the root. You understand? The real root of of Christianity was in Africa, Egypt, even even the Middle East, the so-called Israel and Arabia is part of Africa, basically, Afro-Asia. The language is even called Afro-Shemitic. But there's a lot of um, um, the, the dissemblance of information out there that's mainly from a whitewash perspective. And if you don't, you don't have to take my word for it, look around right now. At the only black person that they show you in, in the whole Jesus story is, is uh, um, Balthazar. Balthazar, they say, well, he was, he was maybe Ethiopian, and some say, well, no, he was maybe Indian, because um, India in, in ancient times was associated with Ethiopia because the Indian civilization was established by Kush or the ancient Ethiopians. But most folks don't know those things. So that's what allows them to invert the time and pervert the time. But let's, let's deal with the point about um, the crucifixion of his, the political crucifixion of his imperial majesty. Upon the world scene, his imperial majesty's person, his name, his person, and his character has been for at least 40 plus years since the, the godless and the creeping coup against, against his majesty and against really us over here because they saw that we more and more was looking to the east. He was looking to Africa. We was looking global. We was looking more international, not just civil rights, but about human rights and about the big picture. And they wanted to keep us as their private commodity here in America. So the rise of the civil so-called rights movement and, and, the, and the radicalization that was on the other side looking to Africa gave the system of things the perfect opportunity. But they first had to do a little bit of um, damage control. They had to kill JFK. 
60 days um, after he had met with his imperial majesty and bore faithful witness to the king of kings. Then they had to also work against the king of kings increasingly expanding um, revolutionary movement that was freeing up various peoples in Africa and even around the world. It's such a resonance. And they didn't have any opportunity until there was a careless generation. In other words, just like the Jews wanted to crucify Christ, and we speak about the black Jews predominantly wanted to crucify the black Christ according to the true gospel, we have the same phenomena happening even in Ethiopia. So we, when we look at the story of Jesus or Jesus Christ in the Gospels and what they did to Jesus Christ or Yeshua, and then we look at an honest portrayal and honest evidence, true evidence, not the way they twist it up, but look at actually what happened on, in the Ethiopia scene concerning his majesty, we find the same sort of phenomenon. So it proved that the Father and the Son is one. And so the Son came to testify of the Father, and the Father came to testify of the Son, as well as Christ in his kingly character. And, and these are theological, when I say theological questions or theological concerns, that if you don't know the Bible, that's what I might say, for my part, I glory in the Bible. We have to study and show ourselves approved. We have to study and find the truth for ourselves, but not just find some things in the Bible and say, yes, that's it, if it doesn't match or contradict other things in the scripture. It's only when your interpretation agrees with the context of scripture, and then prophetically it must agree with the historical sense. And that's what we have his majesty's word that God and history will judge. God being now the word as it has been preserved in the Bible, and the true history will be able to line up as one. And so the political crucifixion of his majesty is no kind of, um, you know, um, disrespect to his majesty or dishonor of his majesty. In fact, it's more of a dishonor not recognizing that what they did to Yehoshua the son that they have done to Kedemawi Hala Selassie Kedus Abatachin or Abba Kedus the father. That's why the revelation of Abba Kedus we find is a fulfillment of this verse right here in um, Revelation chapter 1 verse 18 where it says, I am he that liveth and was dead. How long have they been telling us, Rasta, Rastafari, your God is dead? What was the song that Dorhana Selassie Bob Marley did? He did the song, Jalif. But see, Jalif is very important within the context of Scripture because Jalif ja ja is the Lord liveth. And when we look into Jeremiah chapter 23, it also mentions this very same, this same Jalif ja in the context that no longer will they talk about, blessed be the Lord God who delivered them out of Egypt, but in the prophetic time out of the north country. And where's all of this happening right now? North America. The whole focus is on North America, and that's inclusive of the Caribbean, Central, and South America, and the entire diaspora. But this book right here, on the, to get some of the background, because if you don't have the really historical background and the details of what happened in Ethiopia, then you won't be able to see those key significant events, which biblically happened in the New Testament to the son, to Yehoshua. And this particular book here is called The Betrayal of Ethiopia by Asifa Adefris. Asifa Adefris is on the history concerning Ethiopia. You probably can find it out there, and hopefully you would find it out there. And this is some of the cover. This is like a cover shot of it right here, His Majesty, um, with, I think, Eisenhower, with Kennedy, and I think Roosevelt down there. And this is a very interesting book and a very worthy book. And I, I think a lot of us in the West, maybe some Ethiopians know about it, native Ethiopians. Ethiopians from home might know about it. But um, most probably would reject it if they are enemies of the truth and enemies of Hala Selassie because this, this native-born Ethiopian is basically saying that Ethiopia bit the hand that fed them, and in, in a sense betrayed 
his majesty. So the title is The Betrayal of Ethiopia, but it really concerns how Ethiopia was betrayed politically in, uh, in the global scene and how his imperial majesty was made a point man in, in the same sense as all the movements that was going on in Palestine or in the land of Canaan or Judea. In Judea at the time of Jesus Christ, biblically, there was more than just the Jesus movement. There were other revolutionary movements. Some didn't like the, the Jesus Yeshua movement in the time of Jesus Christ or Jesus of Nazarene because they felt that he wasn't radical enough, that we're under the Romans and we need to go to military. So they rallied around like false messiahs. Some of them rallied around Herod, political guys. Others rallied around like Bar Kokhba. And that's the whole Masada thing, you know, the pseudo-Messiahs, so forth and so on. But Christ, Yeshua, he was crucified because he was the real one. The same thing occurred in Africa. Once they were able to, in a sense, um, politically speaking, take his majesty out of the equation, once they found their Ethiopian Iscariots, the Iscariots, or so-called Judases, but more correctly, the Iscariots, those who were a part of the Ethiopian scene who would betray and speak falsely. That was now the political context that they needed, you understand, to put their other wheels underway against the progress of Haile Selassie the first. So this particular book is written in English, and it is written in Amharic, the section, and it has some beautiful pictures in it as well. And we find that the context of this book is very good because it's speaking from an Ethiopian insider. In other words, not, not one who was big up in the politics so much, but one who was on scene and, 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 and is speaking from a sense of sincere regret, almost the same way that Paul would speak about his brethren, the Israelites. He was down with that. He was a Pharisee. He, he had the teaching, the training. He was, but then he was blind because he could not see Yeshua, Christ, properly according to the context of Scripture. Once the, the, the light shined in him, you know, the whole scene of, of Paul on, on, on Damascus Road and everything, then he was able to look at everything that he had learned and put it into his proper perspective. But we have many Ethiopians, native Ethiopians, who now, all praise be to the King of Kings and his Christ, are also able to do the same thing now. They were forced or made to believe a lie against his imperial majesty, and therefore, instead of defending the kingdom, defending the King of Kings, they joined the mob. They joined the mobile, you know, the mobile vulgus, you know, the popular mob, the ignorant mob. So he has a section here, John Hoy Ba Goresu Ijachuin Tenekasu, which means they bit the hand that fed them. And it's just a beautiful, this is a beautiful work right here. Um, but hopefully we'll be able to maybe go into certain parts of this particular book and just demonstrate more of our point. But the, the, the title right there explains that. It was a betrayal of Ethiopia. And the second part of this would be a political crucifixion of his imperial majesty. Not that, did, they, did they succeed against Yeshua, Jesus, Getachin? Were they able to succeed against the black Christ 2,000 years ago? Some would say, some would say yeah, because he was killed, because they, they do not accept the fullness of it, that, that he so-called was killed, so-called, but he rose from that which demonstrated his divinity. You understand? That demonstrated that he is who, who they and who we say he is. So on the political crucifixion point, I'm going to have to probably go into a little bit of a teaching on that because I get, I get to recognize why it might be hard to receive, especially by some of the Rastafari, because we see in his imperial majesty um, the, a, great, a great manifestation of God and his, his word and righteousness. And we don't want to accept anything otherwise, even though the history demonstrates, you understand, the conspiracy against God, against Yahweh and his Messiah. In fact, Psalm 2 also says, why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? You understand? And how they set themselves against the Lord, against Yahweh and the Moshiach. 
how they set themselves against God, against the spirit of truth and righteousness and the Moshiach and the visible manifestation 2,000 years ago, our brother Yehoshua. In our present time, Kedemawi, Haila, Selassie. So the political crucifixion, that's what we mean by crucifixion. Not, not, not just in the physical sense, but he was lifted up and made a spectacle. Just like in the time of Christ, he said, all manners, if you are this, if you are that, save yourself, and so forth and so on. Did, 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 did Christ save himself? You understand? Or, or he, he allowed himself to be subject to that, but now we see an overcoming in Abba Kedus. We see even an overcoming that more evidence is coming out, more, more evidence that's proving things that we didn't have anything other than the spirit of truth, the vibration. You understand that? No, that's a lie. And then we're not finding actual evidence that proves that, yes, that was so, but they suppressed that evidence. But we didn't have any of that evidence to go off of just the spirit of truth. And we see this throughout the Rastafari movement that many said many things that seemed to the world to be out of this world. But then the real evidence that what we were saying, we couldn't see it like Peter. Peter perceived this. It wasn't flesh and blood that told him this. But it, he, his soul was in tune with the Spirit of God, and this is how he was able to into it. The same thing for us in this present time. A lot of things that, that we were saying, we're now actually getting the evidence. We were saying it as for, in, a, in a Christian or biblical sense. You were saying it, bemnet, 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 by faith. We were saying it by faith, and, and we didn't have the... The, the substance of it to say, hey, if you, I mean, look here, I just got this, just downloaded this. Oh, look, this new book that brought out some evidence, so forth and so on. So we're demonstrating the truth of the spirit, even in the fact that things were said by faith and people laughed it off. And then we bring forth the evidence and they try to say, oh, well, that's not important anymore. Yes, it is, because it proves that we were truthful and y'all were liars. You see? So. On the point about, um, on that particular point, my brother, uh, Smyrna, Smyrna Angel. Let, let's just look up Smyrna for a moment, because we know Smyrna was one of the churches, right? Smyrna was one of the churches, and what does it say about that particular church? I think it was the second church. It says, and to the angel of the church in Smyrna, right? These things say if the first and the last, which was what? Dead and is alive? Are, are you... Are you, are, you, are, are you hearing that? This is concerning Smyrna, your name, your, at least the, you, the, the online name you use, so forth and so on. But it's a good name, Smyrna Angel. There's, a, there's the angel of the church of Smyrna. So you need to listen to the glory of his majesty. And it says right here that the, that the, the one who um, spoke, which is to say Christ, the spirit of truth, the spirit of God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit as one, saith, the first and the last, which was dead, which was what? Dead, and is alive, which was dead to their perception, which was dead according to their evil intention, but in the reality of things is alive. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, parenthesis, open parenthesis, but thou art rich, but we are rich, and I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews, those who say they are Jews and are not, they are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Now, that's interesting. You know, that's very interesting. And we say this to brothers and sisters that there's two kinds of Jews spoken of, uh, and this is concerning the white European Jews, the, 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 the faithful Jews, or the faithful, they could be white, European, uh, Khazar, so forth and so on, but it's how do they testify to the truth? This is what determines whether they are truly Jews, even as converts, or whether they are the synagogue of the opposition, the synagogue of the op uh, opposition. So this is speaking about the synagogue of the opposition. When we get to um, Revelation 3 and 9, chapter 3 and 9, which is under the church of Philadelphia, it says, Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. That is still a prophecy in manifestation, that they are of, they say they are the Jews, but actually, they are converted to Judaism, you understand, and they are not bowing to the king of kings, who is the king of Israel, 
but are lying, but their consciences will be moved by the truth and they will come into a certain state of repentance and will bow and acknowledge who we are and what we have been saying as the truth. Well, let's get back to, um, let's go forward to uh, Smyrna, because Smyrna was a period of great persecution circa 316 A.D. In fact, the church of Smyrna is around the time of the martyrdom of, um, of, of Caduce uh, Georgis of St. George, 303 or so in Nicomedia. That's where, he was, um, that's where he was martyred. But going forward, it says, Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer, which thou shalt suffer. Behold, Diablos, the devil, the liar, shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful to what? Death. Be thou faithful to death. So what does this mean in context with the glory of his majesty? We have to really ask ourselves and go into prayer, study, and meditation upon this to get the proper scriptural and biblical interpretation in the spirit of the God of truth. That means it has to be true spiritually. It has to be true on the psychological level. It has to be true on the physical or the manifest, the manifestation of it for it to be it was two or three, two or three witnesses. Once again, the Trinity is, is evident, the true Trinity. Be thou faithful to death, and I will give thee a crown of life. He that hath an ear, a spiritual ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith to the churches. He that what overcometh, he may seem, you, you may feel like you're overcome, but hold the faith. You understand? Um, contend for the faith that was once delivered to the Kedu son. He that overcometh shall not be hurt. This says, shall not be hurt of the second death. So we as Rastafari say, I and I cannot die. But that's a faith based statement. Now, in order to make that an actualization, we have to study and show ourselves approved. We have to be conformed to the image of Yehoshua HaMoshiach because his majesty says in his autobiography that may that generation of the brothers that would rise up in the future make note of the word which he has spoken for without me speaking of Yehoshua HaMoshiach, the son, the template of the son, I and I cannot do anything. So we have to recognize the importance of putting of, of of putting the message of salvation into its proper its Ethiopian Hebrew context. You know what I'm saying? Is its proper context. So a little bit more on the political crucifixion of his um Imperial Majesty will um come uh, come forth and be forthcoming. I think it's important that ones recognize when we say this, this is not to um this is to glorify the King of Kings. You see, and even under your name, Smyrna Angel, just note that it, it speaks of in, in these sort of terms. So what, what, what Christ speaks about death, that anyone who has faith in me and faith in my word and keep my word, you know what I'm will never taste death. And even says that although he may have died, he shall live. So that's an overcoming of that. Although the enemies may seek to torture you and, and to crucify you like they crucified Christ, whether physically, whether psychologically, or whether spiritually, you understand, whether spiritually one would overcome and one would be an overcomer. So let's look at it in the reality from the context of his majesty. And I over that we've come through this Western um, mis misinterpretation, Gentile misinterpretation, whitewash, Eurocentric misinterpretation of things. But we have... We have hearts and minds and the spirit of God in Christ to go into this documentation, to go into the research, to go within, you understand, to, and find the truth for ourselves, but not to just deny that there is no truth, you understand, to a particular theme that the Gentiles may have mis, um, misrepresented, whether ignorantly or, or purposely with an intent to, to deceive or, or make believe. Yes, his imperial majesty was politically crucified. That's, that's evident. And yes, it appeared that, that his ideas, his work, and everything to them was, was dead. See, we of this generation right now, 
of 2011 going into 2012, as we're beginning to see and recognize a lot of suppressed truth and a lot of hidden facts are coming out. But what about those 40 years ago who in that time believed from their perspective, like Garvey in a sense, like Marcus Garvey. Look at what Garvey said about the King of Kings. Even though he was a Pan-African Ethiopianist of, of, of some repute, but then he saw the physical picture of things and what, how he was treating his majesty, and he separated himself from his imperial majesty. He, 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 may he be forgiven, and may we also be forgiven. And we know there's mercy with the God and the Father of our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christos. So my brothers and sisters, and this particularly Smyrna Angel, I hope this helps to at least clarify where we're coming from with that. Because if we deny certain things, we deny His Majesty's glory. And His Majesty's glory is the Bible when properly or Ethiopically interpreted from the root and the truth. So, brothers and sisters, love, Jah love, I and I love, be with the I in the name of Yeshua HaMoshiach. Shalom Rastafari, when the Nyadon name.